RetroTink creator Mike Chi has just released a new line of high-quality RGB cables for the Super Nintendo, Genesis 2, Saturn, and PlayStation. These are a two-piece design with a short dongle connected directly to the console that includes a VGA-style HD15 connector as the output. Then you could choose which cable type matches your setup best as the main output. They perform better than or equal to the best RGB SCART cables on the market, and if you're looking to upgrade to RGB, these may be the perfect choice. But if you already have a complete RGB or component video setup using existing high quality cables, then you probably don't need this at all. Stick with me to see how these things perform, because even if you already have awesome cables, maybe the next time you add a new retro console to your setup, these will be the perfect fit. Let's start with some basics. These RetroTINK RGB adapters are short breakouts that safely pull the red, green, and blue colors from the consoles, as well as sync and audio. The breakout box contains a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack that allows for stereo audio output. Inside the breakout box is a small circuit, allowing the capacitors and resistors required in RGB cables to be placed close to the console, which avoids ringing. More on that later. Video was broken out through an HD15 connector, which is most commonly used for VGA cables, but this is not a VGA converter. These adapters don't scale the signal in any way, and are simply using a cheap, reliable, and secure port that makes it easy to adapt to other connectors. At the moment, Mike is selling adapters for consoles with an SNES multi-out, a Genesis 2 mini DIN, Sega Saturn consoles, and one for PlayStation RGB output. The SNES version will work with any device that outputs RGB and composite video on the same pins as the original console. That means all original Super Nintendo and Super Famicom consoles are compatible just by plugging them in, but that also means RGB modded SNES minis, N64s, and even 8-bit Nintendo consoles with the multi-out added are compatible, as long as the mod was done correctly, of course. Same with the Genesis 2 version. While it'll work with all Genesis and Mega Drive consoles that officially came with that port, it'll also work with Genesis 1s via a separate adapter, and any mod that uses the Genesis 2 Mini DIN, once again, provided the mod was done properly. Just to clarify, if your modded consoles work with standard SCART cables that are out there from the main manufacturers, then these should probably work too. But if you have some crazy mod done to the multi-out or one of those PlayStation C-Sync mods, or especially anything that requires a custom cable to match the mod, then these or any other standard cable probably won't work. So just as always, make sure your consoles are modded properly. Speaking of PlayStation, these should be compatible with all unmodified versions of the PS1. If you have a mod installed that drains a lot of power, like some HDMI mods, you may have issues with any cable, so please keep that in mind. It'll work with PS2s as well, and you could even pass component video through if you need to access the menu to change it to RGB. They might work for YPVPR pass-through over an HD15 connector, but these adapters were designed for RGB, so you might get occasional color issues if you want to pass component video through. Since Sync on Green is an RGB signal, that'll work fine for 480p games over RGB, provided your scaler or display could handle RGSB, of course. Mike said he's also planning a PlayStation 2 specific version of this adapter, but if all you're looking for is standard RGB output, this one should be fine for PS2s as well. Lastly, there's a version for Sega Saturns. Keep in mind that lots of Saturns have finicky DIN connectors, and this isn't going to magically fix that, but most of the time the signal is fine as long as you're not constantly bumping the console. And remember, this will happen with any cable, not just the RetroTINK cables. Along with these dongle adapters, Mike is offering three cable choices to help adapt these to your existing setup. There's a SCART cable that, when combined with Mike's adapters, is basically the same as buying a really well-built SCART cable for your consoles. The SCART head has a resistor on the sync line, so you should be able to safely use them with other devices that output RGBS via an HD15 connector, such as the Mister. If you're going directly to an RGB monitor, or something like an Extron Crosspoint switch, Mike's offering a BNC cable that includes audio as well. The BNC end has both H and V-Sync available, so you could use these for true RGB-HV VGA signals, like when connecting an Extron Crosspoint to the RetroTINK 4K's VGA input. If you're going direct to RGBS equipment, these would eliminate the need for SCART to BNC cables. 
just use the yellow wire for standard RGBS and leave the black wire hanging. BNC cables aren't directional, so you could even use them on the output side of a PVM to pass video through to your scaler. And there's standard HD15 cables, which also pass audio via the short headphone jack styled pigtails. You could actually use any HD15 or VGA cable for these, but you'd want to make sure they're fully shielded or they won't perform as well. And these perform really well. I'll show examples later. So now that you know what these are, let's briefly talk about use cases. Of course, you could simply get the matching SCART cables and treat them exactly like RGB SCART. And if you already have a SCART setup, these would make a great addition to existing quality setups. But what about some alternatives? I think people with access to cheap VGA switches might prefer just using VGA cables for the inputs, then adapting the output of the VGA switch to whatever cable type you'd like. If you're then going from that VGA switch into something like a RetroTINK 5X or OSSC, using the RetroTINK's HD15 to SCART cable on the switch's output side is all you'd need to connect it to SCART equipment. And if you own either RetroTINK 4K, simply connect the VGA cable to the VGA input for access to all the signals. So that's basically it. These are RGB breakout adapters that allow you to choose what output connector you prefer for your setup. Or use them all. Instead of using a switch, maybe just connect one console at a time, then leave a BNC cable hanging from your RGB monitor and a SCART cable hanging from your scaler. If that's your preference, you'd save a lot of money over buying fully shielded console cables for each scenario. Okay, so now that you know what these adapters are and how to use them, let's go over by far the most important part, their performance. Well, since this is retro RGB, I have to start by mentioning lag, and there isn't any. Remember, these are just essentially RGB cables, and it would be impossible for them to add any latency whatsoever. However, their audio and video performance are still crucially important, so let's start by looking at the video performance. Here's the RetroTINK adapter with RetroTINK SCART cable attached, compared to a high-end, fully shielded SNES SCART cable. The clarity and colors are the same, which is impressive to see, and the output would look identical if you're using the VGA or BNC cables mic selling as well. I did lots of tests on all three, and all performed just as well. One interesting thing to note is almost all RGB SCART cables for retro consoles had some kind of components or circuits inside them, and this was presumably a cost-saving measure. See, only a small percentage of the people who owned those consoles were using RGB, so to add those components onto the motherboard would have cost these companies millions throughout the life cycle of the consoles themselves. So having the components dedicated to the RGB circuit put inside the cable saved everybody some money, so that makes sense. Well, in video circuits like these, the RGB capacitors need to be as close to the console as possible for optimal performance. It's not bad to have the RGB caps in the SCART head, but check out the RetroTINK adapter on the left and a really good RGB SCART cable on the right that includes the caps in the SCART head. Now look, that was a tiny difference comparing two excellent solutions, but that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. I could have chosen a more mediocre cable to do the example with, but I really just wanted to show that these are equal to or better than all of the top tier solutions out there at the moment. Oh, and just for fun, let's show the RetroTINK breakouts next to cheap, unshielded SCART cables. I've done many videos explaining how bad it is to use this cheap junk, so check those out if you're interested, but I wanted to include this example as well for context, as some of my comparisons are really splitting hairs at this point. Speaking of which, let's switch over to audio testing, and I'll start with my favorite real-world example, the all-white logo that plays at the beginning of Konami games. Let's listen to the RetroTINK adapter with SCART cable first. Sounded fine to me, but now let's listen to the same thing through some unshielded cables, and pay attention to the background hum after the sound effect finishes. Yeah, you should be able to hear that even through cell phone speakers. The unshielded cables had a lot more hum while the logo was still up after the sound effect played than the RetroTINK cables. But hearing-based tests are often subjective, and MD Fourier analysis is not so I used that to run some comparisons. With the help of Artemio and some md 4 a Discord members, I built a new testing rig out of an old Mac and ran loopback tests on some shielded cables, then ran the same loopback tests through the RetroTINK cables. These graphs show the difference between the RetroTINK SCART 
VGA and BNC cables versus the shielded quarter inch cables. If you're not familiar with MD48, these graphs may be confusing, so let me show one other quick example. This is two tests of the quarter inch cables recorded one right after the other, then compared to each other. Since analog audio could never be perfect, there's always going to be some difference between each test taken. So all that was trying to show is the difference between the RetroTINK cables and the fully shielded quarter inch cables was about the same as just two tests from the same quarter inch cable run against itself. If these graphs make your brain hurt, I'll simplify. This deep dive audio testing proves that the RetroTINK SCART, VGA, and BNC cables perform just as good as any shielded audio cable, but now it's time to test the adapters themselves. So I used Cosam's Neptune, yep, the exact same one you probably saw in Tito's video, and connected the RetroTINK adapter using short quarter inch adapter cables to my testing device. I also made sure video was connected and properly terminated as I wanted this to be a real world test environment with a CRT connected and running the whole time. Then I ran it through the same thoroughly vetted test setup. I also repeated the same tests with a stock Nomad, and with each console I also used HD Retrovision, shielded SCART, unshielded SCART, and shielded composite cables as well, with two recordings taking of each to remove as much margin for error as possible. As expected, the RetroTINK adapters had far less noise than the unshielded cables, but that's no surprise because we proved that before with the hearing test. But the RetroTINK breakouts also performed almost as good as the best alternatives tested. There's a bit of 15 kHz noise picked up from the console's video output, but it's not something most people would hear, even with good speakers. I think the best way to think about this is the audio performance of the RetroTINK adapters is almost as good as the best solutions available, and far better than any of the cheap garbage out there. I probably wouldn't use it for MD Fourier testing, but if you're doing deep dive audio analysis testing like that, you probably already have a dedicated set of cables and tools anyway, so not a big deal. Lastly, I put the RetroTINK cables on an oscilloscope to get exact voltage measurements. The RGB video voltages were well within safe ranges on all adapters. The voltage was never high enough to start losing detail and never low enough to notice any brightness drop at all. As for sync voltage, using the RetroTINK SCART cable showed about 400 millivolts, which is perfect for SCART devices. To be clear, that's the TINK adapter plus SCART cable connected to a display. The adapter itself outputs about a volt on the sync line, and since the VGA and BNC cables don't have any components inside, it'll be the same voltage through those. One volt is right on the line of what SCART equipment could handle, so if you're using these adapters with SCART equipment, either by Mike SCART cable or something like the HD15 to SCART. As a note, sync is converted from composite video on all adapters and filtered to output clean C-Sync. As a result, they should be compatible with all Xtron crosspoint switches, as those require a clean sync signal. So overall, these RetroTINK adapters provide some of the best video quality I've ever seen from an RGB cable, and while the audio could be a little bit better, I'm really splitting hairs at this point. They perform almost as good as the best cables out there, and 99% of the people listening will never hear the difference between the two. So these adapters and cables are excellent. In fact, if you just need some good HD15 to SCART, BNC, or VGA cables with audio built in, these are top tier. If you haven't bought RGB cables yet, or if you started out on a budget with cheap unshielded cables, these are an excellent choice. But like I said at the beginning, if you already have a solid solution for your retro gaming consoles, there's absolutely no need to switch to these. Other manufacturers do an excellent job with their cables too, and Mike's solution now stands right next to them as what I would recommend for your consoles. Seriously though, always avoid the cheap stuff. They're just so bad. The only complaint I have is I would have liked to see them provide composite video output as well, with maybe a jack on the other side. Only a few people would take advantage of dual RGB and composite out for playing on a CRT via composite and streaming via RGB, but PlayStation GunCon users require a composite video port to work. You could always just get a breakout adapter too, but maybe Mike will release a pro version of these adapters in the future with more features like that. 
Also, I'd like to disclose that Mike sent me all this stuff for testing, and oh boy, did I. I spent like two full weeks getting so much footage, so many different captures, and I really just picked and chose the best ones to show you here in interest of your time, because most of it just looked and sounded identical to the next best solutions out there. Very weird having so much footage and only showing a few clips, but I really would just be showing the same thing on both sides to you over and over, so I thought it was better just to keep it as simple and short as possible. Anyway, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, and there's plenty of ways to support even more, including ones that are completely free. Clicking on the Retro RGB support page and scrolling down will bring you to affiliate links that let you buy stuff from Amazon at the exact same price, but we get a small cut. Just click that link before going to your cart to help us out. If you're not super into this stuff, but feel generous, maybe leave a tip directly through PayPal or Ko-fi. Even the smallest tip is appreciated and links are on that same page. And if you rely on info like this, please consider signing up for monthly support services like Patreon and Floatplane. We recently turned off all ads on RetroRGB.com to make the experience better, but there's no way we could have afforded that without amazing monthly supporters. And of course, we have some fun retro RGB merch available too. If you want to broadcast to everyone around you that you're a fellow CRT nerd, check out that link as well. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.